Hey everybody, Kenny here. Welcome back to our last epoch playthrough. Last time we finished up the Reign of Dragons timeline, and this time we are hopefully going to finish up the uh, Soul of Ice or something like that. I don't remember the name of it. It's ice themed. I know that. Yeah. These boots broke my heart. They absolutely broke my heart. It could have been the best. I'm going to keep it there as a reminder of what I failed to do. Yeah, so we are working on the Age of Winter. That's the one. Last time, we finished up here. I mean, I don't really want to make my way towards Idol's Receptors. Yeah, so I'm not going to. I'm going to do runes and two ethics shards. Trying. About halfway done. I don't get why there's no indicator for what wave you're on. It doesn't make sense. And we're done. All right, so got another soul bastion. We got an acid fletch. I have not found this bow before, but Acid Fletch, low damage, poison on hit, increased poison duration, more poison damage, get a Varrel's damage, converted to poison, 
Hail of Arrows, increased Hail of Arrows duration, chance to shred armor and bow hit, and increased armor shred. Hey. Yes. And no gloves this time. Oh, no, no. Gloves here. Okay. And we get it. Nope. And we're still... Like we still haven't had our our faction bonus trigger a single time. Not even one time has that bonus triggered for us. Take care. I mean, this one has more melee damage, but it has more endurance. I'll keep that one. Yes. Yeah, so aim for that one then. this thing. I have not seen this staff before. Yeah, I have not seen this staff before. No thank you on that. And we're out of here. Hey. Hopefully that unique is going to be our gloves. Not 
not happening. Got a pair of keeper's gloves. Yeah, keeper's gloves used to be a very common unique that you used to get really early on. That was like basically like a guaranteed drop that like I always used to get it. Like always used to get it. Like in one of the uh, one of the older like early access versions of the game. Like though yeah, that unique would always drop. But at some point, it became pretty rare. Like, the gloves themselves, they don't do anything, like, crazy. They just summon bees. <laughs> oh, they do. Just summon bees. Yeah, but, you know, it's, like a, it's a really good uh, unique to have early on. Because, you know, like, the bees... Go and track down enemies for you, and you don't have to like spread yourself too thin. If you're if you're playing a build that doesn't have a lot of and you know, a lot of area attacks or something, but no more. I just show unique gloves is armor, poison resistance, minion poison resistance, and chance to summon a swarm of bees. Then the aberrant call gives you damage and spell damage, also increases your damage over time, more wraiths, plus two summon wraith, minions lose health per second. Yeah, this works really well with uh, warlocks. Like, even though, like, I don't think that. Well, like, I'm trying to think if summon wraith is in the part of. The necromancer tree that requires it being part of your build. Mind you, like, even if it isn't, I mean, like, when I say part of your build, I mean, like, uh, as the mastery that you chose as an acolyte. But even if it, even if, like, it isn't in the part, you know, like, that you can specialize into without being, uh, you know, having Necromancer as your mastery. Like, I think this would actually still be a great weapon for a Warlock. Because the, because, you know, the, the clause about minions losing the health, you know, that's there regardless. You know, that isn't a Wraith thing, that's just a minion thing. Let's sell those gloves. Yes. Take care. I mean, this path, other than this unique, this path is really bad, but at least we get the unique out of it. To look into that closer when we get back. Not happening.
And the gold quantities that are being dropped are very nice. Our unique is a shield, and it's a close call, which we already have. Yes, by close call, I resent you. So I guess we'll go swords and two relics. Because obviously swords into axes does nothing for us. Yes. Ah, oh, yeah. So I guess we, we had more than one Siege Golem left. Oh, but there's a patrol of siege, siege golems, so the next one may be it. A Volcanus, I don't think I've seen that sword before. No, it is not on my list. Well, not list, but my image. In case you're wondering what I'm talking about, like I took a screenshot of all of the uniques that I found in, uh, leg in the legacy cycle. To see if like any of the uniques that I find during this cycle are duplicates. I don't waste my time picking things up that I don't need. Yeah, so I just have it I just have it like sitting on my second monitor. I am finding a lot of uniques. I've seen that relic before. No, I have not. Hey. Got another attempt when we get back. much stuff that I don't need. Not happening. Here we go. Hello, Siege Golem. Hey. Yeah. As we, we finally finish the thing. And two of the four ended up being gloves. Come on, one of you. Boulder fists. Lies machinations. I haven't seen these before. It's lab. I have one of those in Legacy. And Telfin's Mirage. I have not seen the. Yeah, I have not seen these before. I 
boulder fist. I don't recall if I found any boulder fists in the league, but I definitely have them in Legacy. I just called it a league. Not a league. <laughs> like all. That is nice. How those uniques? No gloves. Unfortunately, we are now in a pickle. I refuse. You two will share. Just check here real quick. Yeah, no boulder fist sitting in there. Yes. Yeah, so the boulder fist gloves give armor, melee stun chance. Increased stun duration, more armor, flat life, and, but you cannot leech health. Then the slab gives a bunch of block effectiveness, flat health, use block chance, but 100% less damage taken on block. Now we have no, well, we still have prophecies, but we don't have any prophecies that we're, we can really work towards in the area that we're in. But maybe I should go and get more. But I'm not going to.
nothing. Not after. <laughs> Poison, fire, and void. I mean, technically... No, no, no. No. Warlock can't do void. Yeah, the oil flask or the jade dice are the are, are best uh like the best relics we can hope for with this character. Ivory is crit and ruby is fire resist. I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah, ruby wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, so ruby dice, jade dice, or the oil vial. Yes. Hey. That is perfect. Where is that on the range there? Yeah, like midway through the range. Yeah. Take it. I mean, the forager potential is terrible, though. So it's very... It is not likely at all that we're going to be able to turn that into anything good. Not likely in the least. Take care. Arena of Memory. Hmm. My first time seeing that one. I don't want to go through bows, though. But I want to go through here. Yeah, hopefully we'll find another one of those.
Chest over here. A lot of poison damage. And the belt is Durial's Fury. I've not seen that one before. to take that. I'd have to drop something. Might have to drop something. Okay, so the Azuriel's Fury, Mana, Poison, uh, Potion Slots, oh, lots of health regen, increase fire damage, grants you False Water Fury until you run out of mana. During False Water Fury, your mana does not regenerate and is drained at accelerated rate. During False Water Fury, non-channeled melee attacks consume 20 mana to deal 100 melee fire damage. Wow. And so I think we're... I think we're close. This looks like it's, uh... Like that... That potion build that I keep talking about.
Another unique. It's a lot of attack speed, but on that weapon doesn't really do much for us. All that parry chance. No idea what parry chance does. <laughs> I have Orexia. I definitely haven't seen that before. Eye of Orexia is a mage relic that gives physical fire and poison resist, increases the volcanic orb damage, increases the recovery speed of volcanic orb, increases the speed of volcanic orb, increases the shrapnel speed of volcanic orb, and makes it that you can cast it faster. Well, that you cast faster in general. I mean, it doesn't seem build defining, but. Guess you like volcanic orb. Last one we need. Having the water shrine with this build is funny.
It's very obvious when that shrine runs out on us. And the set ring we got is... Ah, Invokers. I have two of those in Legacy. Yes. So, Invokers, just mana, mana regen, chance to shock, chance to gain ward when you shock, increase level to static, increase spell, da spell lightning damage, that bonuses increase elemental cast speed and give you bonuses to fire, lightning, and cold spells if you get the full set. Two of these. And they showed up in 15. Actually, three of these. Yeah, so 15 away. Well, I mean, that's 15 away. Not a guaranteed 15 away. But it does so happen that over here is, I guess, the edge of like the limit to this particular one. And we have access to all of these now. I rejoiced when Herod defeated Rae with this, bringing destruction to the stands of the south. Rayo leading an army to Thetima. I want no part of this. What happened? He's imprisoning all who object the war. I only just managed to escape. The others are still trapped below. Herod. Herod's heart is cold. Be careful out there. Good warning. Take care. I think it's the first time that I've seen like a uh, is Heborians as enemies. Can I see that? Wealth. Yep. Gotta go for it. Okay. Beetles. Not happening.
Flying to the Forgotten Night. Don't think I found that before. I have not. This is a stunning shrine. Yes. Praise Atera. You've saved us. Julia still imprisoned. Herat's warrior sealed her in a block of ice at the other end of the canyon. Please free her. I'm on it. Toughest mage we run into. A lot of strength. And damage. Oh, all of that's so good. Why the strength? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? I don't even know what this is. I'm just attacking it. Like it's not even giving me like any kind of like tool tip or anything for it. I have no okay. Okay, that was her. He was that little block of ice. <laughs> hmm. I'm free thanks to you. We have little time to waste. But Joka is gone. A frozen graveyard. Do not act quickly. That Tima and Solarum will share in their fate. Why is Herat doing this? Herat is a peaceful god. But even he has limits. When Raya attacked, Herat was forced to kill him. One of his own. I think that broke something in him. Once he crossed that line, he forgot what it really means to defend the people of Heriboria. What do we need to do? I tried to talk him out of this madness, but he will no longer listen to me. He says he only obeys Herat. Okay, so I guess I asked about Grail. 
I don't remember asking about Grail, but I guess I did. <laughs> Foolish man. This is a long shot, but you may be the only one left who might reason with him. He trusts you. As for me, I will go east to interrupt, intercept Herat. He is still hesitant to destroy his followers. Even if they have turned against him, you may be able to reason with him, or at the very least, buy you some time until you return. I'll leave it once then. Thank you. I'll see you soon, hopefully with Grail by your side. Okay, so the next area we're gonna well and was this the first one or the second one? Remember. I think this was the first one. Yes. I'm assuming it was the first one. And Grail was most likely the second, you know, like, we're probably going to fight Grail in the next one. I didn't go over these. First, Lions of the Forgotten Knight. Block chance, block effectiveness. Void damage, block chance. Chance to apply time rot and attackers when hit. Chance to inflict time rot on hit. Really void damage. Less void damage taken on block. Void penetration with time rot. More void damage per stack of time rot. I think this one is for that. Yeah. So we have both we have two pieces of this set. And for these, Volcanus is a two-handed sword. Gives extra melee fire damage, extra spell fire damage, uses fire damage. Percentage of fire damage uses health, and it has a chance to cast Magma Shard on melee hit. And the Kelthin Blasting Agent is an oil vial that... Uses decoy duration, increases cooldown recovery speed for decoy. Chance to ignite on throwing hit, and increases ignite duration. Of giving fire penetration. And the Telfin Mirage. Increase dodge rating while channeling, increase dodge. Okay, so flat dodge rating while channeling, and increased dodge rating while channeling. Ward gained when you dodge while channeling. Mana gained when you dodge while channeling. Intelligence and movement speed while not channeling. Then the Leia's Machination. Armor, mana regen. Two levels to fireball. 50% of fireball is converted to lightning. 27% chance to apply spark on hit with fireball. 20% of ignite converted to shock. 52% increased lightning damage and ward per second. Yeah, so I only did the first one. Most likely be fighting Grail here. Wonder if he's going to be a big Grail or just regular sized Grail. Assistance. Came like a storm. The freezing wind and ice have covered the harbor. Not a single ship can leave. We're trapped. Fix this. You have my trust. Somebody else talked to up here.
happening. I have two of those in Legacy, but this has two legendary potential on it. of the Pontifex. I do have this in Legacy, but once again, it does have ignorant potential on it. Grail here, just regular Grail. You've killed them, haven't you? We're both stained with blood now. So it appears. Come, give Herod's champion a proud death. Send this. Oh, did I get a, <laughs> a unique off of broken barrel? <laughs> Joke Horse Compass. Don't have that in Legacy. I don't want to, don't have one of those here. So, Joe Core's Compass. One happens to have two legendary potential. Bow damage. More bow damage. Bow stun chance. Reduced bow attack mana cost. And increased arrows with multi shot. Uh, the Fire Starter's Torch. Alien spell damage, increased chance to inflict spreading flames on hit, more damage against enemies afflicted by spreading flames, increased fire damage over time, reduced fire spell cost, increased movement speed. Then the torch of the pontifex, melee damage, melee stun, necrotic damage, chance to add on hit. Increase fire damage over time, increase fire damage taken, remade enemies you kill, burning enemies around them, chance to summon burning skeleton for 10 seconds when you cremate an enemy. Alright, time to finish this. Frozen Citadel. Talk to you here. Mm -hmm. I was too late. The alarm is no more. Please stop Herat. Well, okay. Fight Herat. Hey Herat. 
Champions, aid me. Shut up. Do not stand in my way. I see. This is a mercy. Yep, it moves with Hera. Come, <laughs> sons of Artor. I did not expect that. Thought it was just a storm. <laughs> I don't like that the attack areas don't match the hitboxes. It's always a dick move in video games. That's a first. Actually, before we do this... Just to make sure that there aren't any available prophecies for beating him. Four. 
or in tier 2. The death of a boss. If I haven't put up with bad signaling, then I want the, the most award possible. That is such a dick move. Like, if you are running a build that doesn't have movement tech in it, at least I have an, a movement ability. It just so happens that every time he does that, I happen to have just used it. But if you're running a build that doesn't have movement tech in it, then like th that that is instant death. He runs away, you know, you're dead. There's nothing you can do about it. So that's actually like so right there. Like he does aim it at you. So as long as you make sure that you're always in it. Well, okay. Yeah, so there's no there's no geometry on on those walls there. As long as you make sure you're standing in front of a wall, like he can't he can't run away from you and kill you with the thing. It does appear to be stuck in the wall. I did what I must to protect my people. Alright, so the blessings that we get for this one. 
Physical resistance, chance to shred cold resistance, or armor. Yeah. I think I'm overcapped on physical. I'll get that armor. Oh, is a rain of winter. Do not have one of those in Legacy. Loves ours, Doras. We've gotten those before. Bears, we've gotten them. Derek's Greed, we've gotten them. Well, have we gotten the gloves? Maybe not. Need to check. And these are all body armors. Deadness. Titan's Heart, which we've gotten before. Oko's Abandoned, I have not seen before. Festival, I've gotten in Legacy, but I don't think I've picked up in, in this. Uzro's Pride is actually the uh, <laughs> the armor that my mage is wearing in my uh, my build video. And Doublet of Onos, I have in Legacy. We are done. Next time we'll start on Spirit of Fire. We just have two timelines to go. Yeah, we are overcapped on physical. That was good. Yeah, we do have the Xerx gloves. Yeah, these are better. All right. So to go over these, confirm. Yeah, I didn't pick any of those up in in this cycle. So the Uzro's Pride gives lots of armor, gives a nice amount of flat mana, gives a good amount of strength, gives lightning resist, and increases your mana regeneration per uncapped lightning resist. And the Kestrel uh, gives extra dodge rating, extra movement speed, chance to, and chance to gain haste on hit, increase the effect of haste, and... Plus one to dexterity skills. Uh, the doublet of Onos gives a nice amount of flat health, gives minions a chance to bleed on hit, and gives a minion bleeds increased duration. And Titan part I went over last time we found it. And Brain of Winter. Oh, code damage, bell code damage, code penetration, chance to cast Icicle on bow hit, and increased attunement. Yeah, I'm not sure why this exists. I don't know, because this is, you know, this is, as you see at the top there, like this is a rogue weapon. And the only way that attunement plays into any rogue build is if your weapon is a staff. That's the only time that attunement plays into any any rogue abilities. 
I don't know why this exists. And this here. The Elko's abandoned. Dodge rating, damage over time. Throwing an acid flask consumes a potion in order to throw an additional flask that deals more damage. Plus two to throwing attacks. Increased area for throwing area skills. All resist, movement speed, and increased potion slots. And so this may be part of the potion build. So that and the Azura's Fury. Maybe that's for melee attacks, though. So maybe not. I mean, unless there's a... Yeah, if there's a melee attack skill that throws acid flasks... Yeah, that can be altered to throw acid flasks. Hmm. Mind you, like uh, the big part of that particular build is that you know there's a way to you know to build up, you know, like to like passively build up. Uh, potions. Like, without a way to passively build potions, then that's not a build. Before we get going, we'll take a look at that shield. I mean, it's a massive bonus to block chance, but yeah, the block effectiveness and armor aren't any good. That is going to be it for this one. It's so crazy that, you know, this build is doing so well. Like, regardless of how much higher level the areas we go into are. So, next time we... Work on the next of the final three, and then that's done. We do the last one, and it's over. Why do these keep popping up? Like, what is this in reference to? Because there's something showing up here. Oh, okay, I see. Oh. The last ruin, Spirits of Fire. Why this one? What's here? These two are saying what they're doing that for. But why here? Doesn't make sense. Regardless, thanks everybody for stopping by and checking me out. 
doing the playthrough. Appreciate you doing all YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, be Victus, Virus and Amaris, and bye.